Heidi Ho, Goals and Booze. Thank you for joining us today for another podcast episode on the Horror Tour Guide. And I'm your horror host, Slaughter Singh, she with Empress of Gore. Today, we have a feared, fabulous guest. Please introduce yourself. Where are you from and what do you do? Hi, my name is Anne-Marie Hurley. I am a makeup artist and I do mainly movies and television. I'm originally from Australia, but I live here in Florida, but I basically work all over the world. How long have you worked in makeup and special effects? I've worked in makeup and special effects for over 35 years now. So wow. yeah, I've, been, I've made a career of it. I've been doing it for a very long time. I started in television, but it's all I ever wanted to do. And so I went to makeup school and then I set myself a two-year plan to get a job in the actual industry and once I got into the industry which by the way was the last week of my two two-year plan and I was interviewing for office jobs when I got a job at a television station and once I got in there I had a five-year plan of how to get from working in a television to be doing freelance movies and special effects and then I worked my way up to prosthetics and special effects. I worked with a company there called Makeup Studio 114. I worked for them for a long time. And we did all the special effects and the prosthetics for film, television, TV commercials and all that sort of thing. What kind of films have you worked on? Ooh, I've done lots of films. I've done lots of everything. I've done like low budget films. I've done huge budget films. I've done superhero films. You know, I, I'm not sure how to, how to cover all that. There's a lot. Can you name a few? Um, when I first moved to America, my first job here was working at Universal Studios in their Halloween Horror Nights in Orlando. And from there, my first movie, my first feature film when I moved here was the first Pirates of the Caribbean. And then I did the second Pirates of the Caribbean and I did the third Pirates of the Caribbean. And I've done superhero movies from there with Marvel. I worked on Thor, the first Thor. I've worked on Spider-Man, The Avengers, Infinity Wars, Hunger Games, and I've done like smaller films like The Front Runner, which will be coming out soon with Hugh Jackman. Did a pilot for ABC recently in Texas. So I go from doing like really big jobs to really small jobs and they're all still fun. That's an extensive resume, Anne-Marie. <laughs> Something to be proud of, of course. Uh, what about TV? Can you give us some insight on some of the television shows that you've worked on? I haven't done a lot of TV here since I've been here. I, I did the first season of Timeless which was shot in Canada, so I went up to Canada and worked there. I've done a lot of work on Sleepy Hollow, which has been a lot of creature effects, and most of those creatures, in fact, all of those creatures were designed by a makeup artist called Corey Castellano, who also lives in Florida. He had brought me in to help with the applications, because when you do creatures like that, it's never just one person doing it. You've got a minimum of two, sometimes up to four or five of you working on various aspects of putting the creature together. And as you can see in some of the photos that I've provided, I didn't do any of those makeups by myself. It's always been a team of at least two and up to about four, putting all those creature makeups together because you only have a limited time to do it in. And so you all work together at once. And you absolutely have some wonderful work. How did you end up working for major commercial films? When I first moved to Florida and I was working at Universal, I went to the makeup trade show in California, one of the first IMATs that they had. I met a makeup artist by the name of V. Neal and she asked to see my portfolio and I showed it to her and then we had a chat about what I can and can't do and she was the lady who hired me on the first Pirates of the Caribbean. And I got my union days on that. So I was then a member of 798 New York Union, IATSE International. And then on the third Pirates, I was brought in on a ventilating specialty because I hand tie facial hair. And I qualified to join 706, which is the California IATSE International. Nice. 
And so amazing speaking to a woman that participates in the Hara aspect. We do appreciate your work and your contributions in our Hara society. So what's your specialty? You mentioned a little bit about the hair tying, but what else do you specialize in? What do you do? What do you love to do? Ventilating or the hair tying is my specialty. It's kind of a dying art. There's not that many people who do it. And styling it and cutting and styling facial hair and making it is kind of my specialty. Also prosthetics, special effects that sort of thing yeah I kind of do a little bit of everything I can do beauty as well I get hired to do all of them basically and it's a nice change every now and again not to be doing dirt and sweat and running up a hill or you know walking through a desert or trekking through a jungle sometimes it's nice just to be in a trailer doing nice beauty makeup what can you say was your most exciting gig Marie the first pirates I think because we all knew we were working on something special but we had no idea how huge it was going to be basically and it was different makeup for different times and different climax and we were using different products and we were doing makeup in a different way that hadn't been done that way before by layering paint and things like that so it was a big learning curve and everybody basically had a really good time we're out on a a pirate ship in the middle of the caribbean it sounds so excellent Can you explain to us what was your most stressful job or your biggest conflict that you've ever had on set? It's not so much conflict, but the most difficult job I've worked on was the Lone Ranger. Basically because we were out in the desert and it was locations and we moved a lot. There were budget restrictions. We weren't able to get enough help. You need a certain amount of help to be able to do the big crowd scenes and all that sort of stuff. So you're constantly making compromises and things like that. And it was a difficult location. The other one I've done that has been extremely difficult was Fear the Walking Dead because we shot it in Mexico. And once again, it's budget restrictions, location restrictions, and not being able to get enough qualified help to be able to help you get it all together. It's a difficult job and you're working like, you know, 15, 16 hours a day. So it's just, it's hard work. Can you explain to us a little bit about the difficulties as to working somewhere internationally, like having a gig that's international and what kind of conflicts will arise? I've done a number of films that have been shot in other locations overseas and they all have different difficulties. But, you know, when you're shooting on an island like we were for Pirates, just the difficulty of getting food for a crew the size of the crew we had. They had to ship everything in and we had to ship all our makeup in. We had to, and then you have to manifest everything so it all has to go through customs. And then you never know whether you're going to get it or not. I shipped all my stuff to Puerto Rico for the rum diary and all my dark tone foundations were taken out of my kit. So when I got there, all my dark tones were missing. Production had to replace them. And for Mexico, we could bring certain things in, but we couldn't take them back out again with their customs. So if you bought a new bottle of Bluebird ink in, and you used three quarters of it, they wouldn't let you take the quarter that was left. Everything had to be in an original bottle. If you downpacked it, as we do as makeup artists, you downpack it into smaller bottles so you can put them in your kit, they wouldn't let you take those back out of the country. So you end up leaving half your stuff behind. Usually I give them to the local makeup artists, but you know, there comes a point where you're leaving so much stuff behind that production has to reimburse you for everything. Trying to find qualified makeup people in other countries is difficult. You know, I'm not saying they're not there, but it's hard to initially find them. So it's quite complicated in actually working your way through all those people to finding people who actually have the skill level that you need to get a job done. Because you know what? Sweat and dirt are hard. People don't know how to do sweat and dirt and character makeup. They can do fine beauty makeup, but a lot of people can't do the character makeup. And so you have to bring people in, which of course costs production more money. Now Fear the Walking Dead was a bit different because we had a regular makeup department and I was the key and the department head also came from California and they had a zombie makeup department which all those people came from California but they would bring them in and out all the time. They would never stay for the whole thing like if we were shooting infected or zombies they would bring them in for the three days that they worked and then they'd ship them home again whereas we were there all the time for the duration of the job. How long is a job like that typically? I was the second key that came in because the first key got a different job offer and had moved on. So she was there for the first half. So I think they started in around March. So she had been there for a couple of months prior to that. So they must have started in February sometime. And then I was there from March until July. 
So usually it's long. It's a long time. When I did Timeless in Canada, I was there for around six months. Would you say that was your longest job? No. I think we shot the Lone Ranger for almost 10 months before they went into reshoots. Keeping busy. <laughs> what would you say is some of your future goals or plans? Anything for us that we can look out for that's coming up? I have a couple of films that I completed some work on last year that are coming that are coming out. The Front Runner, which is a story about the Gary Hart story, when he was the front runner to run for president and the scandal and all that sort of thing that happened and how that changed the way people reported it. Because before then, people didn't really go after the scandal of politicians. And Gary Hart was the person that basically came out and said, if you think I'm cheating on my wife, catch me. So they did. And that was like how we ended up with tabloid reporting that we have now. So it was kind of a pivotal turning point in the 80s. So that's coming out soon. And I did The Gifted which is an X-Men TV show where I got to do a lot of mutant makeups mm. and things like that. So I did that last year as well. They, they all kind of like blend together when you go from show to show to show. I have to stop and think, well, what did I do last year? Do you have any future goals or plans, like anything that you're looking forward to working on or is there anything that... Everything is really confidential until it, it comes out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's stuff that you may be working on or there's stuff that's coming up that I can't really tell you about because I can't get into the meat of what it's about. I can't tell you about the makeups. I can't tell you about the story. I can't tell you about what happens because as a makeup artist, we all signed a confidentiality agreement. We can't talk about it until it comes out. Mm -hmm. Basically, once they come out, by all means, we can come back and revisit it. And the studios hold you pretty hard to that confidentiality mm -hmm. agreement. Non-disclosures. Non-disclosures and all that sort of thing. The studio will come after me if I break their confidence, mm -hmm. basically. So as a makeup artist, you're often asked to sign confidentiality agreements on pretty much every job now. And when you get your script, it's watermarked with your name over the top of it so that if anything gets leaked onto the internet, your name's on it. And some people get like smart about it and they take their name off it digitally they can find you. It happened on a job I was on where script pages were leaked and the person's name had been digitally removed. The studio hired somebody specifically to find out whose name was under all of it to find out where the leak came from. And it's the same when you get screeners because they send you screeners at the end of the year for voting purposes. You get all the films sent to you. They're all digitally watermarked to you. So if it shows up on the internet, they will find who it was sent to and they will pursue you and they will prosecute you. Those that work for SAG and AFTRA, they're yeah. very, very familiar with that. Yes. <laughs> be aware. Be very aware. Is there anyone out there that's like your role model or your inspiration? Oh, I've had a bunch of mentors over the years, if that's what you mean. To start with, the gentleman that I worked with in Australia, his name is Nick Dorning, and he had a makeup company that I worked for. He has now gone on to a product line called Bluebird Inks, which is like a tattoo cover or an alcohol-based makeup for special effects. They have a whole range of bloods and all that sort of stuff, which is pretty fabulous. He was a big help to me when I first started, and he taught me a lot of what I already, you know, what I know now. He, he taught me, and then as you continue to work with people, they teach you things. Yeah, you, you pick up things from other people. V. Neal is another person who has been a mentor and a friend who has really helped my career a lot. Dick Smith. When I first moved to America, Dick Smith was Aww. fabulous. You know, they call him the godfather of makeup for a reason. When I first moved here, he called me and I answered the phone. He goes, hi, it's Dick. And I went, yeah, of course it is. And I thought it was one of my friends paying a plank. And I'm like... Of course it is. What do you really want? And he's like, no, really, it's Dick Smith. And I'm like, yeah, 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 what do you want? And he goes, no, really, it's Dick. And I went, oh, my God, it really is you. <laughs> and he was, he was so kind and he was like, yes, yeah. so I was just wondering how you were going. I know that you've moved here and that you don't have any family here and I was just checking up on you. 
And we had a lovely chat for an hour or so about what I was doing and where I was going and how my job was and all that sort of stuff. And he was instrumental in me getting a job at Universal because he called the Universal makeup department and he said, there's this girl from Australia and she has quite a nice book and she's got some experience. I think you should interview her. So he got me the interview, but I got myself the job. And that's what he always said. I got you the interview, but you got yourself the job. So you never know who's going to help you. And you should always be nice to everybody because you never know who can help you. And you don't walk into a room and go, I think that person can help me. Let, let me go and talk to them. Because it's the third person you walk past who there and dismissed is who's the person who actually could give you the job. So you just don't, never know. So I just try, you know, to genuinely, I'm genuinely nice to pretty much everybody I try to be. Well, Anne-Marie, that was a wonderful story with Dix, Meg. I mean, I am a huge fan. I've always been. If there is someone out there that would like to do what you're doing, what advice would you give them? Go to makeup school. I'm a big believer in makeup school and everybody goes, well, I'm self-taught and I'm not taking it away from anybody who's been self-taught. I think it's great. If you go to a makeup school, you learn the rules. I mean, there are rules to make up, you know, about how you do things. And this is why we do it this way. And once you know the rules, you can break the rules and do your own thing. But there's a reason why, you know, we shade and we highlight and we do all that sort of thing to start with. And I think it just gives you a better, well-rounded basis to start from. And then you can go off and do whatever you want. And don't be discouraged by people who tell you you can't do it. I'm a hit chick from the outback. I live in a tiny, small country town. And I used to tell people I was going to be a makeup artist and they used to laugh at me. And, you know, even my career advisor at school told me I needed to adjust my goals to a less loftier height because, I, you know, a t teeny tiny country town is where I came from. But, you know, don't be discouraged by people who tell you you can't. You can and you will. Words of wisdom right there. What's your favorite horror film? I really love the Blair Witch Project, the first one, the original, the found footage. I thought it was ahead of its time. It was scary. I really, really liked it. I thought it was clever. And it was made on like a teeny tiny budget and they made millions of dollars. And then when they tried to recapture the magic in the second one, when they had a bigger budget and all that sort of stuff, it just didn't do as well. So that's probably one of my very favorites. If you had to pick a horror character of your choice, like something that you love or identify with, what would you be? That's a tough question because there's so many great horror characters. I think one of the best, most well-developed, well-rounded horror characters is Freddy Krueger. There's been so many Freddy Krueger movies and the first one is still, for me, the scariest. I really liked it and I really liked his character and I really liked the way that he developed and I loved the makeup. I thought it was great. I think that's probably one of my favorites. And in your opinion, what's your definition of horror? That's a tough question because it can be anything. It can be anything from your slasher freak to your, you know, your blood and gore, your vampire movies. I think horror is a really big genre, but there's subcategories underneath that from, you know, it's, it's hard to explain because it's all encompassing, you know, from your Jason and your Friday the 13th and all that sort of thing, all the way to things like the Blair Witch Project or, you know, the House of 13 Ghosts and all that sort of thing. I think it's all encompassing. If someone wanted to hire you or wants to find out more about you, how could they find you? All my information is listed on mandy.com. They can find me there. What a terrific interview with this tasty morsel but now sad to say you have to go I'm getting home <laughs>